Girls only needed a little bit of a bribe with chocolate. <laughs> See that? So it's almost nine o'clock at night. We've just pulled into the Algonquin North Outfitters where we will be renting our canoe for the week. Um, we're just turning down the road to the Kayos campground. We've been driving, well, I guess half the day and we have another 30 kilometers down the road to the campground and we'll set up the tent and explore the campground tomorrow. We had a long drive up to Kiosk, so we chose to spend two nights in the car campground. This gave us lots of time to feel relaxed and prepared for our backcountry adventure without feeling rushed. Check out our canoe! North Algonquin Outfitting Company delivered the canoe to the campground for us so that we could leave on our adventure first thing in the morning. Your favorite color. <laughs> um, are we? Well, my favorite color too. Um, yeah. Are we sharing a seat? Yep. Yes. <laughs> So we're here at access point number 29. So we have to paddle this yellow line across the lake this way, down, and then we have a 635 meter portage to Little Mink. So what does that mean? Less than a kilometer, it won't be bad. And then we paddle this tiny little lake, Little Mink, and then we have another 410 meter portage into Mink. And then we'll stay in this lake tomorrow, or um, yeah, tomorrow night. Okay. Good morning from Kayash Lake here in Algonquin. It's Monday morning um, and we're getting ready to set out into the backcountry. We, <laughs> we slept in a little bit longer than we had planned. We had planned to get up really early, um, but the campground was a bit loud last night. So we let the kids sleep longer because they had a late bedtime. That's okay because as you can see it is quite a foggy morning. That's Kayashkakwi Lake down there. Um, but it's it's totally calm right now, which I'm excited about. So we, right now we have a mix of our car camping gear and our backcountry gear, which is all sorted and we're just getting everything put away. Had some uh, bagels for breakfast <laughs> and powdery donuts. <laughs> So I just need to go pack up the tent footprint and fly and finish our final touches here and we'll be on the water. We got the first portage, the easiest one ever, from campsite number one down to the boat launch. Off he goes. Smile! You guys ready? Yeah. We're just paddling into the sun here on Kayashkakwi, but we're approaching the old railway tracks. So I was just talking to the girls about how we're gonna paddle underneath that old railway bridge up there. So I think the train stopped running in the 90s, which is good because that would have made last night even louder. No, it gets deep quite quickly, see that? Don't go swim and pass the girl. <laughs> Don't sing, Mom. That's the answer there. 1921. 1921. It's 101 years old. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Kayashkakwi Lake remained calm, and we soon arrived at the portage to Little Mink. The portage wasn't very challenging terrain-wise, but my personal preference is to always change into my hiking boots for the portage. I'm carrying a lot of weight and it's just not worth it to me to risk a sprained ankle out in the backcountry. Alright girls, let's portage! <laughs> you got a stick, you're ready to go. Let's do this. Emily leading the way, unless you come in. What do you love? Yeah, the boardwalk part. Oh, they just cut the grass, it looks like. That's nice. <laughs> Is that the train track? That's the old train track? Must be, eh? Yeah. The 
portage from Kayask to Little Mink Lake follows Mink Creek and we stopped briefly to admire the beautiful views. So this beautiful little area here is Little Mink Lake. We have just a short paddle here from Little Mink and then we'll portage to Mink. Portage 410 meters, I believe, from Little Mink to Mink. It's busy. There are, I think, three canoes down on the Little Mink side, and we passed another two canoes being portaged along the trail in the other direction. You guys saw, survived your first two portages. Yeah, they weren't that long. They weren't that bad, right? Here we are at Mink Lake, where we will be spending the night. There's the train track again, the old, the old railway. Yeah. So we've just put in on Mink Lake. It's a, it's a pretty hot day. The mosquitoes definitely greeted us at the end of that portage there. Mink Lake is a, kind of a long, narrow lake. So we're gonna paddle down and try and find a campsite for the night. And we're still paddling next to that old railway. So we found our, our home for the night, our campsite on Mink Lake. Corey's just getting some water for our Katadin Gravity water filter. We have a little bit of beach on this site, which is awesome. Looking forward to a swim, because it's pretty warm. Pretty hot this afternoon. The fly was just a little bit wet with condensation from this morning, so I'm just letting that dry out for a few minutes while we dive into some food, which we've, <laughs> we have uh, kind of spread everything out on these benches that we have here, but we've got uh, some beef jerky that Corey made at home, some baby bell cheeses, um, and a whole bunch of dried fruit. So Alyssa's enjoying some uh, dehydrated strawberries and apples right now. And we're, <laughs> we're super thirsty, so we're gonna drink lots of water after we've got it uh, filtered. I think this is gonna be the spot for our tent. I'm gonna set that up and try and find the, uh, the flattest spot possible. But here's the fire pit and here's our view. Can't complain about that. We plan shorter days when we're doing a canoe trip with the kids, leaving lots of time for relaxing, swimming. Here the girls are writing in their journals. That way we don't have to be stressed about making it to a certain distance every day. So the girls are... There you go. The girls are really good about playing in nature. Um, there! And just enjoying the trip, but it's become a little bit of a tradition that I hide some... Uh, <laughs> some little toys <laughs> in the pack and uh, break them out. I heard that! <laughs> at different times on the canoe trip. So Alyssa was having a rough day today. Sleep was limited last night. Um, and she wasn't sure about this campsite, but Don't anyway. Don't like it. Not your favorite? It's the worst. It's not, it's got a beautiful fire pit. We got a great view. We have a beach. Perfect view for the rocky beach. Yeah. It's gotta be good. Anyways, it was, it, it was. a really fun deep end. Yeah, so it was a good time to break out the, the toys. <laughs> Try not to touch them. So we're just on a day trip um, here on Mink. We have a rest day and we could see this strand of beach at the very south end of Mink Lake. So we're gonna go check it out, see if it's a good place for a swim, have a snack and a drink. We just hiked the portage, well part of the portage, from Mink to Cochon to check out the old railway track. Um, so yeah, we're just relaxing, enjoying the beautiful weather. It's 
a knife. Uh, um, what am I? <laughs> it's knife. Now, Dad, Dad is the question mark. Yeah. I don't think he's going in. He's never going in. It is hot. I am going to take advantage of Look this it. private beach right now. Look it. What'd you get? You tucked in the sand? Very nice. How is it? Good. It's about 4.30. The thunder is, we can hear it rumbling in the other direction now and it's getting more and more frequent and a little bit louder. So we've been busy cleaning up the campsite. Corey's put up a tarp there for us. We're putting pretty much everything in the vestibule of our Eureka tent here, our Eureka El Capitan. We love this tent, it has two huge vestibules um, to shove stuff in for situations like this. And it's still bright and sunny here, but I'm gonna go pull down the rest of the um, our bathing suits and stuff that we have drying on the clothing line and throw them in the vestibules as well. But we'll just go down here and take a look at the sky. Oh wow, is it hot down here? Oh yeah, look at that, eh? Beautiful. A bit threatening, but so amazing. Okay. Definitely time to finish packing up. We are currently waiting out a thunderstorm in our tent. Sitting on top of our thermorests. Seems like we're onto the downpour portion of the storm. The girls are just playing and, <laughs> and we're organizing for tomorrow because we're off to a new campsite tomorrow. It's still raining, but we're hungry for dinner and uh, we decided to make a bannock tonight to go with our sloppy joes, so it's just about ready. Yeah, we We're under our next silicone tarp. Vanek is cooking. It's still raining, but yeah, we haven't heard thunder in a while. So. so I've been bringing journals for myself and for the girls every year. <laughs> <laughs> They're drawing silly pictures in theirs right now. They're nice to have. It's, a, it's a, an activity when we're sitting under the tarp like this. It's a foggy morning here on Mink Lake. That's the lake. <laughs> Barely even see it. Yep. It's still was raining earlier. It was, yep. So we're just having some instant oatmeal and I'm having some coffee. And we're getting ready for the day. We leave this site today. So we're going to paddle and then portage to Club Lake. It's going to be awesome. Yep. Like you can handle it. About 10 in the morning. It took us a, quite a while to pack up this morning. Everything was soaking wet, so I had organized our bags a bit yesterday afternoon, but then it started pouring rain, so we had to get out our rain gear and our warm sweaters and everything. So that's okay. Everything needed to be repacked, and it was super foggy this morning, so we kind of just took our time. So now we're paddling to the very south end of Mink Lake, and then we'll do the portage to Club Lake. And we'll be spending the night on Club Lake, where Lissa gets to pick the campsite today, right? That was the deal. So we're approaching the south end of Mink Lake. There's the lovely little sandy beach that we 
played at and explored yesterday. Is that the portage right there? Probably. Oh. Okay. I thought we had to travel down this creek a little bit more. I don't see the sign. I don't see the sign either. I don't see any. I don't think so. It just doesn't look like a well used trail. Okay. We know it's here, Em. The map doesn't show details this small. Up the creek. It's shallow again. Okay, Do we see another little beach. We're thinking this is the portage. Oh, yeah! Look at this trail. That's a trail. Beautiful. That was fun. I liked that. We did a good job turning this 18 and a half foot canoe. <laughs> this is the portage from Mink Lake to Club Lake. The sign said it was, I think, 985 meters. The old Jeff's map that we had had it over a thousand, but around a kilometer anyways. Very pretty so far. There are the girls carrying their own packs. How you guys doing? You're hungry. Okay, we gotta finish this trail first. Okay. So that was a rough portage for me. I'm carrying the seal line pack which doesn't have a sternum strap and doesn't really fit me very well. And I'm front carrying my day pack, so there's this part of my back that's kind of spasming. But anyway, look at this view. So as a family of four with two young kids, we always double portage, um, which is fine. We bring our, you know, our chairs and our hammock and make sure we all have a set of warm, dry clothes. So I don't mind. Plus we have tons of snacks. <laughs> so I always try to take a deep breath, take a moment and try to enjoy the, the hike on the trail on the way back to get our second load of gear. This is a beautiful trail. I'm loving all the white birch in this area of Algonquin. We just did the portage one way from um, Mink Lake to Club Lake. So now we're we're back to the food barrel and we're having a much deserved snack. Oh, finished the portage and we're greeted by that green frog that's swimming away there. We got some, oh, and another frog. We got some pickle, pickerel weed blooming there, that purple bloom. I always love paddling through that stuff. Club Lake. Oh, look who's flying by. Oh, no way. My favorite bird. Great blue heron. Building. Oh, that's the old logging building. Okay, that's why there was that clearing there next to the Portage Trail. How cool is that? Wow. That is really neat, guys. The website AlgonquinAdventures.com shares a trip report by Dan Minkin in which they describe Club Lake as being shaped like a pair of eyeglasses. The one lens would be over there and we're about to paddle over the nose bridge of the lake and hopefully find a site uh, on the other lens of the lake. That's our goal anyways. There are only three sites on the whole lake. so. I mean, it's possible that the two over there are taken, but we're going to hope for the best. Mm 
on screen. <laughs> so we got a whole loon family to greet us here. We are staying at the site across the lake from here. Not sure if the camera will pick up that orange campsite sign. The swimming on this lake is quite weedy. This site was just vacated, so we thought we'd do a quick paddle over and see if the swimming was any better over here. It's maybe arguably slightly better, uh, but the girls are, are just going through, <laughs> through the weeds. We're all gonna give it a try because it's a nice hot day. Um, anyway, this site, we're not moving over completely because we, we do like the site over there. This site has no shelter at all by the the fire pit. Nowhere to set up a tarp or anything here, that's for sure. Um, and if it was windy, you know, good luck having a fire. <laughs> I'm just gonna go for a quick swim and sit back and sip my drink. Enjoy the beautiful afternoon. Obviously, if someone comes paddling by looking for a site, we will uh, leave immediately. But right now, we're just gonna swim. So Emily's paddling in the bow for the first time. We're just headed back to our campsite. Liz is paddling next to me. I get to sit here and do nothing. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> oh, there's a loon right there, Em. Do you see it? Yep. First time I get to see things. Yeah, that's right. So we're all set up here on Club Lake. It's pretty weedy for swimming, uh, but we did it anyway, that's okay. There's a nice rock to kind of sun yourself on. But the site itself is actually lovely. It doesn't look like much from the lake, um, but we come up this little tiny hill here. Again, we heard some thunder rumbling in the distance. Corey's got the tarp set up just in case, but it seems to have passed over today. We've got a bannock cooking over the fire here. Burbies. Kids are playing. Have We've me. got some pasta sauce and mushrooms that I had dehydrated at home. Those are rehydrating there in that Ziploc. In are you here, holding it? Some pasta oh. noodles are cooking, are warming up. There's an awesome spot for our tent here. We've got a clothing line set up. Drying out our, uh, our stuff from swimming. And a fantastic place for the hammock. So, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. This site looks terrible from the lake, but it's actually great. Um, super cozy, well sheltered, nice flat spot for the tent, and it actually has a breeze, which is keeping the bugs um, to a minimum. They're still biting, but not nearly as bad uh, as they were on the portage trail earlier. That'll be a great spot for the night. Thanks so much for watching part one of our family canoe trip on Kayashkakwi Lake. Please subscribe, check out part two of our trip and all our other adventures. Thanks for watching.